What's up, Loop community? My name's Edge. I'm a Logic Pro certified trainer. And in this session, we're gonna pick up where we left off in our main stage series. So far, we've imported songs into main stage and we've set up Looptimus to control which songs can play back. But we've still got some work to do. Uh, we need to actually set up some screen controls so that we can uh, assign a stop button and so that we can assign other buttons to different playback controls. So let's get after it. Okay, so picking up where we left off, the first thing that we need to do is that we need to get rid of everything in our workspace. It's not anything that we need in the context of running tracks, so we're just gonna start from scratch by just getting rid of it. So I'll go to layout, and in layout, I'm just gonna go ahead and click in the area I'm gonna select everything, command A will do it, and I'm just gonna press delete. Again, we don't need any of that stuff. So we're just gonna go ahead and start from scratch. Now, main stage has a bunch of different controls that you can assign to pretty much any plugin, you can assign to pretty much anything that main stage can do. But you have to lay them out first before you can start assigning them. If we're gonna be using Looptimus as a model, there's some foot switch options, but you know, I'm a big fan of just kind of keeping it simple. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag a drum pad in, and you can see it kind of assigns a particular drum pad. Now I don't really necessarily need all of the other stuff that comes with this drum pad. In fact, uh, right now it's giving me kind of a text label, and I don't need that either, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, in the left-hand side, under the screen control inspector, I'm just gonna go ahead and set that to nothing for now. Now it's a little hard to see because everything's a little bit black, but that's all right. If you want to make it a little bit easier for you to see what it is that you're working with, you can drag a background in. You can have it cover the length of the work area. And then you can change it to something that makes it a little bit easier on the eyes to see what it is you're actually working with. I've got seven buttons to work with, so I'm going to create six kind of laid out similarly to the way that they're laid out in Looptimus. I can option drag or hold down the option button and click and drag to make a copy of that particular button. And if I want to lay these out equally, I can select all of them at once by holding down the shift button and clicking on each item. Then over here in the top right hand corner, this little gear icon, I can go ahead and align these objects to their vertical centers. And I can distribute these objects evenly. Great. Since they're all selected, I'll just option drag them again. And now I've created six more buttons for me to work with. Cool. While we're at it, I might as well just assign these to the buttons that I'm going to use. These will be the six main buttons on Loop to Miss. We've already used Loop to Miss. We're already using Loop to Miss program change mode to change between tracks. So we're going to need to switch over to Loop to Miss's all access mode. If we look over at Loop to Miss for a second, then we're just going to hold down the next button till we get into all access mode. This then gives us a whole brand new set of uh, six buttons for us to work with. Now, back in main stage, if I want to map these buttons to those six buttons, then I'm gonna go ahead and click assign. I'll click on the button that I want, and I'll just then press the button that I want to assign it to. And I'll just go down the list. So these top three buttons will match to the top three buttons on Looptimus. And these bottom three buttons will match to the bottom three buttons on Looptimus. Great. So the next button that I'm gonna want is gonna be a stop button and it'll be more like a stop play button. So for this one, I want a custom label for it. And so I don't particularly want any parameter automatically imported value. So I'm gonna set it to nothing, but I am gonna add a hardware label and this will be kind of like the play stop um, button. So I can type in play, stop, and that'll be a signal to me that that will be the play stop button. And just like before, if I want to assign this button, I'll click on it and I'll say assign. And whether I'm in all access or not, once I click the stop button, that'll be both my play and my stop button. I haven't actually assigned that stop button to the stop function. I'll go over to edit. I'll go ahead and at the concert level, I'm actually gonna set this to a global play stop. Now this is important because the concert level means that whatever happens here happens across every single patch. So that's gonna be really important. If I only did it at a patch, it would only do it at that patch level. So I wanna make sure this is a play stop for every patch that I'm on. So I'll go to the concert level, I'll hit play, 
and I'll go down to action so you can see that it's ready for me to map it. And I'm going to go ahead and just map it to that play stop function. Great. When I launch a track and Intro, it starts, two, three, four. I can press the play stop button to stop it, and I can press the play stop button to start it again. Intro, two, three, four. Okay, great. So we've kind of got some basic functionality going on here. The next step that you're probably going to want to do is actually set up your layout to make a little bit more sense. Right now I've got these six random buttons, but right now they don't really do a whole lot. So we're going to go ahead and actually just spend some time creating a layout that's going to make sense for us and still kind of capture the best of what our playback track template is all about. So uh, I'll go back to layout and let's just kind of explore some of the different options that we have. Okay, so this background is a little too big. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little bit smaller and kind of encompass uh, these buttons that we've already created. Now, I've got ideas for what I want this layout to do. Um, so later, when we kind of start mapping these buttons, these buttons are going to be mapped to different song sections or different transport controls. So if we imagine for a second, this top row, we'll probably set that to be our verse, our chorus, or our bridge. Um, and because these buttons exist in each patch, uh, we can actually assign them to be pretty much anything that we want them to be. So it could be a verse in one song, or if there's one particular section that you're fond of repeating in a worship set, then you can kind of assign this to like that one bridge section that you do over and over again. You could assign these bottom ones to anything as well. So one could be a go to a previous marker, or one can be, you know, a repeat a section song, uh, and one can be like a fade out in the event that you get off uh, beat. You can kind of use this as a different button to do that. And we'll, we'll show you how to do that a little bit later. But for now, we're going to go ahead and start by continuing with our layout. So I've got my all access buttons. They'll be available for me for whatever I need. I've got my play stop. Uh, the next thing I need is to kind of know where I am in a song. And while I won't be looking at my computer screen a whole lot when I'm leading worship, I need to know which songs I'm going to be playing. And luckily, Mainstage has got a grouped control ready for me to work with. So I'll click on grouped control. And the thing that I'm probably going to work with is this compact patch list. That one's pretty helpful. So I'll go ahead and add that over here. And I'll make my panel for these buttons a little bit bigger. I'll also go ahead and move these up, make this a little bit larger as well. I'll move these to the side and I'll move this play stop button right over here, kind of like in the center. Great. Now, it's one thing to look at the different patches that I'm playing or the different songs that I'm playing, but if we've got tracks with different um, parts or different sections, if we're working with tracks that have markers in them, then we're definitely going to want to use the selector to be able to see which parts are currently playing and which parts are next. So I'm just going to drag that inside here, kind of like it's the little LCD inside of Looptimus, and I'll just drag that a little bit larger. You can see here on the left hand side, it says patches and sets. I actually want it to be patch names or markers, uh, and that'll basically allow us to assign that to the markers that are built inside a song. Okay, and then the last thing that I'm going to do is probably get a little bit of a, of a timer that's going to let me know how much time I've got from one patch to the next. So I'll go ahead and make that a little bit larger here. I'll drag it around. And instead of the parameter value, I just want the value. I just want to know what's coming through. So now I'm set up in a way where I can see which patches are playing. I can see which part of the patch is playing or which part of the song is playing. I've got a global play stop that I've already mapped, a little progress indicator, and I've got six buttons that are going to be assigned to the six buttons that I have access to on Looptimus. Great. It looks like our template's coming together, and I can do one last thing. If I don't like the background of this panel, I can click it, and I can give it something else, uh, like that little wooden panel. Uh, I kind of like this guy, though. Uh, it's nice, simple, dark, but, you know, light around the edges. So, great. So that'll be my top section. Uh, I could also put down a section down here. So if I wanted to put, like, my mixer controls, like, to mute or unmute or to make the volume a little bit higher or lower, I can do that. I can drag in some vertical meters. Uh, and luckily, there are some grouped controls that we can work with. So if I chose this vertical faders, for example, I can drag these in, and they're already built, ready for me to, to work with. 
So that's a good starting point for us to kind of uh, work with as far as all the different screen controls inside of main stage. So the last thing we need to do uh, is that let's switch over to edit mode. And you can see that when we're in here, um, this particular song is currently mapped to the actual patch itself. What we want to do is that we want to click on the selector over here, and instead of it being attached to the patch list, we want to attach it to one of these playback instances. Um, it doesn't really matter which one we select. I always like picking the first one because it's the easiest to select. And if we click on it, you can see that if the song has markers attached to it, it'll go ahead and show me the different markers that are in that particular list. So same if I go to the next patch. Uh, right now, this one is set to the patch list again. I'm going to go ahead and just select it to that first marker, or that first playback. Um, and you can see it lists out all of the markers. Now, in the event that you've got a song that doesn't have any markers, if I click and assign this to any one of these playback instances, you'll see that you'll get a blank uh, selector. This lets me know that this song actually doesn't have any markers, and that's fine. So great, that means that we can Intro. click in here. Three, um, and if we wanted to, we can go ahead and just click on the next section. And it'll go ahead and launch it based off of what we've selected the sync value to be. Four, verse, two, three, four. Chorus, two, three, four. Right. Cool. So in the next video, we'll show you how we can actually map these layouts uh, to Looptimus using all access mode. Feel free to take a look around, um, set up your, your main stage layout the way that you'd want to set it up. There are countless ways to get this set up. There is no right or wrong way. The best way is whatever way works for you in your workflow.